Slow news day, huh? Well, uh, fingers crossed, the sun will still rise tomorrow, and uh, life will go on. Uh, but, at least for today, the racing world has continued to operate uh, with some regularity. So we are going to talk about that today, and hopefully uh, some of the problems of today, at least for however long this video is, will kind of be in the back of your mind, at least for a little while, so we can focus on things that are actually good in this world. So, let's get into it. Well, there was supposed to be some big NASCAR Cup news that broke today, and no, it wasn't Martin Truex Jr. Uh, suddenly announcing his retirement, though uh, that was quite entertaining on Twitter yesterday. It was Anthony Alfredo who has signed full-time for Front Row Motorsports. Now, this is something that uh, wasn't necessarily unexpected, uh, but it was something that was unconfirmed up until this point, uh, which is uh, going to be quite interesting, I think. I think Alfredo is definitely a talented driver, and it will be interesting to see what he can do in the Cup Series, and certainly, at least at the Daytona 500, you know that that's going to be a good car. So... Uh, I would wonder if he's going to uh, maybe surprise some people in that first race of the season. Speaking of the Daytona 500, I gotta give a shout out to Ryan Gavel, who made the list that I talked about yesterday. And as it turned out, I knew I recognized the name because he is a subscriber of this channel. So thank you, Ryan, for providing that list to the internet. And actually, I need to give another shout out to Ryan because he updated the list today. So I will leave a link in the description for those of you who want to check out uh, what he has uncovered between yesterday and today. Uh, but I think one of the most important things that I got from the list, uh, just taking a look at it, was that uh, he has now got 48 cars on the Daytona 500, or his provisional Daytona 500 entry list. So uh, I think that gives us a really good opportunity to see uh, some really exciting duels uh, to see who will get into the final uh, 40th starting position at this year's Daytona 500. It'll be interesting to see uh, how many of these things uh, end up taking place. Oh my god, we're talking about diecasts on this channel again. Throwback, uh, what is it, Wednesday? No, that doesn't work. Way back Wednesday. But I felt like this is important enough to say because of something that I know as a diecast fan uh, I've been asking for forever which is that Greenlight Collectibles will be doing road course winged cars uh, for the first time ever, and uh, the first time since I think Action Collectibles had the license that any kind of a road course IndyCar diecast uh, has been produced, uh, so that is very exciting. Uh, and I certainly think that it has a large part to do with the fact that Jimmy Johnson will be only participating on road courses next year and they uh, I guess there's more discerning uh, collectible hunters in NASCAR land who will be coming over uh, Greenlight uh, to their credit took this as an opportunity to improve their product and uh, more uh, power to them I, I will be interested to see which cars end up on this road course aero uh, kit uh, I would assume at least the Jimmy Johnson car will, uh, possibly the Scott McLaughlin uh, St. Petersburg car, and maybe even the Scott Dixon championship car. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, again, this is something that uh, will be very exciting, I think, for diecast collectors going on. And again, big shout out to, to Greenlight to finally listening and uh, and doing the, the way the Indy cars are making Indy cars that look like they do for what is unfortunately now about 90% of the season, the big wangs. So, we got an update uh, on the GTLM class for next year, or for this year, in the uh, Rolex 24 and beyond in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And it, of course, involves WeatherTech, as the WeatherTech team will be moving up to the GTLM category next year in 2021 for the full season. Now, this will be a Porsche and it will be the same Porsche GTLM car that was purchased from the Porsche North America team at the end of last year for Proton Competition. Now, Proton Competition will be running this car for Cooper McNeil and friends at the WeatherTech uh, team. So this is the same car that we were expecting beforehand, but now just with WeatherTech sponsorship. So this is not an additional car in the GTLM category, at least for the Rolex 24, where we will see a, a, an actually pretty good field with Corvette uh, Risi, Ferrari, 
and uh, fingers crossed BMW, though I don't think that's been 100,000% confirmed as of yet. But at the very least, it means that the Corvettes will have someone to race throughout the entire season, as again, this car will be a full-time competitor in the WeatherTech series. And finally, we've already talked about it on this channel, but it was made official today. The Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, which was to be the IndyCar season opener, has been delayed to April 25th of this year. That currently means that Barber Motorsports Park will become the season opener for IndyCar on April 11th. So IndyCar themselves have claimed that this is uh, COVID related. Um, while I think that that's good PR, um, I would say I don't think this is necessarily COVID related, delaying something a month, especially in Florida and especially when they race there in October with no vaccine. Uh, and honestly, looking at it, uh, you know, if there was really a major COVID concern, it would be, you would be looking at the Rolex 24 getting delayed, which it hasn't. You'd be looking at the Daytona 500 getting delayed, which it hasn't. I have said this before. I really think it's because IndyCar wants to condense the schedule a little bit uh, to try to save some money and, and continue momentum. Uh, I, I, and again, I feel like you probably haven't been paying attention if you think that, that things are going to vastly improve in a month, uh, especially when we're talking March of 2020 versus April of 2020. I, you know, I just don't think that's going to make a significant difference in any kind of metric or goalpost that's going to mean any kind of normalcy is going to return to, uh, to this world we're living in. But I do think this is a good thing. Um, again, condensing the schedule, that's something that, uh, and, and not necessarily making the, the season shorter, I mean condensing the schedule in the respect of you don't have momentum killing one month or two month gaps in between races, especially at the beginning of the season before the Indy 500. Um, I guess like it, it makes sense uh, with the Olympic break in the summer, just from the perspective of NBC Sports isn't going to want to, or, or even if you ran a race, they would stick you on CNBC, or worse, and uh, that's not good for anybody. Uh, so it's kind of a lose-lose situation with the Olympics. But, but in the beginning of the season, where there isn't quite as much sports competition, uh, I, I definitely think that uh, this was the right move. And it's not like it's going to be something that IndyCar is going to promote again uh, because, of course, it would be an admission that, that some of their scheduling in the past hasn't been that great when, when talking about momentum and talking about being able to keep people invested and interested in the product. And again, I applaud them uh, for at least taking this opportunity to make this change. Uh, and again, I'm not worried about... Uh, IndyCar or St. Pete being able to put this event on a month later. They've already proven that they are very much capable of pulling this off. It's, it's part of the reason I'm confident in Long Beach, though obviously the state itself is going to be a, a major factor in whether or not that uh, event actually takes place when it's supposed to take place. Uh, everybody involved uh, already knows how to do this. So again, from, from that perspective, I'm not going to be a negative Nancy. Um, Barber is the season opener is another kind of interesting uh, aspect to this because there had been rumblings. I mean, it was something that I had heard that possibly Barber could have been moved back um, when I was uh, talking to people in the know about what was going on with St. Petersburg. And I guess it comes down to TV. Uh, it's going to not be the greatest uh from the perspective of you're now starting the season on NBC Sports Network versus starting it on NBC. But again, you know, beggars can't really be choosers here. I, th I do think that ultimately this works in the, to benefit everybody. And from the perspective of the teams, uh, you're not going to, you know, unfortunately for some of the people working in the series, you're not going to have to bring in employees a month early and, and then keep them on the payroll sitting around doing nothing for a full month. You'll be able to bring them in for Barber and then it'll be a pretty straight uh, shot until the, the summer break for the Olympics. It works for the fans who may be planning to attend uh, St. Petersburg because, yes, indeed, it does give an extra month 
for those of uh, those people who, who want to get a vaccine or are able to get a vaccine uh, at, at that time. So that works for a peace of mind sort of thing for people who would be traveling to attend this race. So it could help the attendance. Of course, that also helps the St. Petersburg Grand Prix and Green Savory promotions. If they are able to sell more tickets, uh, that's good for everybody involved. And again, I, I do think this is a good thing at the end of the day. Uh, and I do appreciate as well that it seems like we are becoming able to adapt to these sort of things. And that's nice. Um, certainly, I think a lot of people were caught off guard with what was going on in 2020, and no doubt about it. Uh, those were unprecedented times. We're still living in unprecedented times, uh, to be fair. And, you know, I don't want to go too far down the speculation rabbit hole, but I would suspect this is probably not going to be the last schedule change. I think everybody's looking at Toronto, and maybe people aren't necessarily going coming out and saying it right now, but does anyone think that Toronto is actually going to happen? And if that's the case, where do you do a doubleheader? Maybe you do another doubleheader in Indianapolis, unfortunately. So we get to go back to the all, only IMS road course or whatever that meme was. And then I also have the question of the Indianapolis 500. Uh, we're probably going to know within the next month or two uh, if that event needs to be delayed again. And I would say that, again, my prediction is 25% capacity on that event. But at the same time, it's probably not going to be a very great fan experience. Uh, it is certainly not going to be anywhere close to what it was in 2019. And, uh, you know, even to get to 25%, they may have to delay again. Uh, and, and who knows what, what's going to happen you know, if that's the case. Uh, again, best case scenario, they at least get the 25% in May at the traditional date. But again, I, I am not confident in anything right now. And I think things like the Indianapolis 500, we may hear more about in the coming weeks and, and months. Uh, and again, that's no, there's no inside information in there. I want to be very clear that that's me speculating completely. But it just seems reasonable and it seems like, again, kind of what I've said at the beginning of this video. If you're expecting things to get better, they're probably not going to get better. So we have to kind of expect the worst and... You know, it's not necessarily the worst if it does actually mean that people can actually attend this year's Indianapolis 500. But I would not be surprised at all if that particular event gets delayed. But again, we'll have to see. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, be sure to stay safe out there uh, and uh, don't worry too much. Uh, at the very least, we've got some racing coming in the coming weeks. And, of course, we'll be covering the Rolex 24, which is the uh, kind of one of the races to kick off the 2021 season. So thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I will see you in the next video.